Hello everyone and welcome to the top 10 characters with Flurry on Bleach Brave Souls. Now before I begin this video, I do want to preface it by saying a few things. First and foremost, and I did put this in the title, this is not a PvP video. While I did take PvP into account, the rankings of these characters are not what they would be if it was a PvP video. Secondly, I'm fairly certain that some of the placings on these lists might make a few people upset. But to those people, I just want to remind you that just because you like a character, doesn't necessarily mean they're the best. There's no reason to get angry, especially because this is just a fan-made video about an anime game. And lastly, I do want to say that every single one of these characters is a really good character. Just because they're higher on the list doesn't mean they're a bad character, it just means that that's where they ended up. With all that said, I'm sure I'll still get a lot of hate for this, but my job isn't really to pick the fan favorites for these lists. With that said, let's begin. Now kicking off the list is the manga version of Saji, a character with a really high attack as well as a normal attack damage link. Of course, needless to say, he has flurry, but he also has poise, meaning that he does not stagger when hit. This can be pretty useful when autoing or really any PvE, and it's certainly useful in PvP. Also, despite not having the highest SP, he does have decent strong attacks. They all have really good range and he does have a plus 30 berserker, so it's not like they're not gonna do any damage. Finally, there's the matter of his special, which is unlike any other special we have in the game so far. This special transforms Sajin's normal attack, and while it is something we've seen in the past, his is the only one that's basically permanent, as it really doesn't do much for his damage, but it does increase the range of the last attack. And it's something that comes in handy quite a bit, especially in Senkaimon, when you're trying to hit enemies from a distance. Now unfortunately, he doesn't have the best killer, but then again, most characters with Flurry don't. Still, don't let the fact that he's at number 10 fool you, he is a very good character, and one that's definitely worth maxing out if you have him. Next up is the reason that some of you may get more than just a little bit mad, but you know what, that's okay. Now yes, this full hollow Ichigo may be a very new character, a very cool character, and also the main character, but it doesn't necessarily mean he's the best. That said, he is still a ridiculously good character. He currently holds the highest attack in the entire game, though that doesn't mean the highest damage output, and he's got some really unique abilities. For one, he resists 20% of damage caused by captains, and for another, he also prevents healing and PvP. He was very much made to be a Retsu killer. And boy is he ever. That said, that's the very reason he's so high up on the list. He was mostly made to be a PvP character, and while that is great, this isn't a PvP list. Still, it doesn't mean he can't be great in PvE, as I mentioned he does have a really high attack, and he also has a really good normal attack. By which I mean he's got really good range and he lunges a bit, increasing that range even more. He's also got really great range on his strong attacks though they don't deal that much damage, and much like Sajin he also has poise. Then we have his soul trait, which oddly enough is actually better for PvE than PvP, though it can still be useful there too. It is of course last ditch survival which guarantees bringing him back if he were to die though not at full health. This is something that's very useful for autoing, but you usually get ganged up on when it's used in PvP. For whatever reason though, they did end up giving this character a Captain Killer. It doesn't exactly make sense and you would've been way better off with something like an Arankar Killer, but I guess they were determined to take down that Retsu just in case Noitora wasn't doing it enough. Amaino. Next up we have the one armed version of Yama, who despite having a lower attack than the previous two characters on this list, does have something they don't, and that's the ability to inflict debilitating burn on all of his attacks. And since he has flurry, it means the possibility of inflicting it is basically doubled with his normal attack. This is something that's useful in both PvP, since it whittles down the enemy's health a lot faster, and in PvE, when you're having to take down bosses or deal damage to bulkier enemies. It also makes his strong attacks infinitely more useful than the previous characters on this list, since now you actually have a reason to use them. They may not deal that much initial damage, but they have really good range and have a good possibility of inflicting burn. Also, he does have a plus 40 berserker, which is 10 more than the previous two. This Yama also comes equipped with a 16% damage reduction soul trait, so in addition to dealing damage, he can also withstand it. Finally, there's this character special. It's one of the few vortex specials in the game, and it's definitely the most useful out of the ones that there are because his inflicts burn. This character truly lives up to the title of head captain. <laughs> I 
honestly never expected to put Hiyori on a top 10 list, but here we are. Miss Hiyori has a really high attack, as well as a normal attack damage link, but more importantly, she has a hollow killer, which is unbelievably valuable. Until recently, any character that had flurry had either a captain or an Espada killer. That all changed a few months ago, however, and Hiyori is the latest one to have a good killer. This is important because things like Senkaimon, Inheritance Zones, and Droplet Zones multiply the killer's effect. A character autoing a droplet zone with a captain killer isn't gonna do nearly as much as a character like this who has a decent killer. That's not all. This Hiori also has a strong attack too that's a vortex move and it's a long lasting duration one. It may not deal that much damage but it definitely helps increase the combo and it's super useful in things like autoing to get enemies trapped in a single spot. Her other two strong attacks don't have the best range though and unfortunately she doesn't inflict a status ailment. Still she's completely immune to being poisoned and she's also the first character you can get in premium summons that has both flurry and a good killer. And honestly, that makes me really excited for upcoming characters, because we really do need more flurry characters with a decent killer. Coming in at number 6, we have Kenpachi Zaraki, the Bonds version, who is currently tied with the second highest attack in the game. In addition to having both Flurry and Poise, he can also inflict debilitating weakening on all of his attacks. Much like Yama, this is a good thing because his normal attack hits twice, doubling the opportunity to inflict the weakening. But even more impressively, his strong attack too is a vortex move that surrounds him. All it is in attack, it does double as a shield, and it's very likely to inflict debilitating weakening since it hits a large number of times. And thanks to his Poise, he's pretty much guaranteed to pull it off, unless of course he gets killed, frozen, or paralyzed. This makes this character not only one of the best characters to take in PvP, but also PvE, though granted his killer does make him a bit slower than some other options. Kenpachi also has a damage reduction soul trait that can be stacked up to 76%, meaning that this guy can take a beating if you build him correctly. He's easily the best version of this character that we've seen so far, and I would imagine it would be pretty difficult to top it. Now at number 5 we have the Bonds version of Chad, someone who desperately needed a remake and did not disappoint. Chad also has a really high attack, though not as high as anybody else on this list. That said, there's a reason he made it at number 5, and that reason is his strong attack too, which just so happens to be a boost move. This chat also has Enhancer, so that boost is going to be active for 20 seconds. This not only increases Chad's attack, defense, and focus by 33%, but also the rest of the team, and effectively makes his attack over 950. It also makes him a team player, and extremely useful in both PvE and PvP. In addition to this, his Strong Attack 1 and Strong Attack 3 have a chance to inflict paralysis, though it's not debilitating. His special is also guaranteed to inflict paralysis. If I'm being honest, the position from him and Kenny kind of switched back and forth when I was creating this list, but the reason I ended up putting Chad above Kenny is simply because he's a human, and at least at the time of this recording, there's not really events or anything that have human killers, so you can safely take him anywhere you need him. The same cannot be said about Kenny, plus as I mentioned earlier, he's a team player, which means he's also useful as support. If you ask me, this chat remake was definitely long overdue, and I personally can't wait to see another one. You know, in three years. Santa Teresa! Now it's at this point that I want to take the time to calm people down and remind them that this is not a PvP list. Otherwise, Noitora would most certainly be number one. That said, I did take PvP into consideration, and it's one of the main reasons he's this high up on the list. This guy is an absolute beast. Starting off with 10 barriers and having both one of the highest attacks in the game, as well as flurry and poise will definitely land you in a good spot in PvP. Not to mention that everything he has except for his strong attack too can inflict debilitating paralysis. And thanks to the flurry, he's more than likely gonna at some point, making him even more dangerous. As I mentioned, his strong attack too does not inflict it, but it is a boost move, and it not only increases his stats, but it also increases the magnification on all of his attacks, which is something very few characters can do. That said, 
it doesn't have enhancer, so this boost only really lasts 10 seconds. In addition to this, the range on his normal attack isn't the best. Plus, he does have a Captain Killer, which means he really is most useful in PvP. You obviously still can use him in PvE, and he would be good, but as with anyone with an Espada or Captain Killer, you're not gonna get the most out of the killer multiplications. Still, all of this and 16 DR make for a really impressive character, and one that's gonna be really hard to take out in PvP. And I'm very curious to see how Caleb gets himself out of this one. Now both Noitora and Yami came out at the same time, and while Noitora is undoubtedly better than him in PvP, Yami is better in PvE. Yami has a really high attack as well as Poison Flurry. Plus, he has a normal attack damage link, which means that even though his base attack is lower than Noitora's, Yami is actually gonna hit harder. Though Noitora does have a longer attack string, Yami could inflict debilitating burn on all of his strong attacks and his special. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't apply to his normal attacks. Still, he is very likely to inflict it with the strong attacks because they do have ridiculous range. In addition to this, Yami is also completely immune to being frozen. Not only that, but unlike most characters that have flurry, he actually has a hollow killer. And that's what really sets him above Noitora. While Noitora is very reliable and useful in PvE, he is significantly slower when it comes to killer multiplication, and it makes Yami more useful in far more situations than Noitora. And that's why I ended up putting him at number 3. Bankai Minazuki Zakyo wa kore ni te oshimai Now having Flurry and a decent killer will definitely make you fast. It's the reason I ended up putting Yami above Noritora. But at some point, a character will be so reliable, so unkillable, that it completely outweighs the speed. And that's exactly what we have with our number 2 character, Retsu Unahana. Or Yachiru Unahana, whichever you prefer. She may not be sitting at number 1 in PvP anymore, but she's definitely still usable for it. And when it comes to reliability, you can't ask for a better unit. Not only does she have a really high attack, poise, and flurry, but she's also got a really fast normal attack speed, in addition to good range on her normal attack. What really sets her apart from the rest of the list, though, is the fact that her strong attack 2 is a heal move that not only heals her, but the entire party, useful in both PvP and PvE. Plus, this character has damage reduction at 16%, it can be stacked up to 76%, and a combination of that and healing will mean that she's very difficult to kill in both PvE and PvP, though more PvE these days. In addition to that healing strong attack 2, she's also got a healing special. It heals the entire team for 60% of their total health, and it also has the possibility of instant killing the enemies. Honestly, the only downside to this character is her captain killer. It does kind of slow her down, but like I said earlier, her reliability outweighs that, and it's why she ended up so high on this list despite being so old. Finally, at number one, we have the Thousand Year Blood War version of Soifo, who, much like everyone else on this list, has a high attack, poise, and flurry. Unlike everyone else on this list, though, her strong attack 3 is a freaking nuke, and that's not even her most impressive strong attack. No, that honor belongs to her strong attack 2, which is not only a boost move with Enhancer, but it's also a vortex move that surrounds her. The vortex move doesn't last for 20 seconds, though it only lasts for the usual 5. Boost move, on the other hand, basically makes it toward her attack is over 1000, and much like Noitoros, it also transforms her, and increases the magnifications on her strong attacks and her normal attack, allowing her to deal even more damage. Though hers actually lasts for a pretty long time. Soifun also has a pretty good range on her normal attack, thanks to her having long reach at 20. She's also got a normal attack damage link, so she's gonna get more damage out of that. Plus, because she is a Soifun, she can also flash step multiple times, letting her clear a level faster and making it that much easier to dodge enemies' attacks, including enemy specials. To top everything off, she's also got an Arankar killer, which makes her unbelievably valuable when fighting any Arankars, which is pretty frequently considering it's a very common enemy. She is easily one of the best characters in the game, and it makes me really excited to see what we get in the next batch of manga characters. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for some more top 10 lists. Promise to try making them more frequently.